what kind of programming tools, as we would call them today, even existed for the 704 in its earliest days before Fortran? Uh, well, it was an assembly program. Right. And that's about it. <laughs> that was about it, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so it was from that experience, it led you to write a memo to, I think it was your boss, Cuthbert. Uh, Heard. Heard. Yeah. That said, hey, I've got this idea here. Yeah, I mean, you, this, 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 you got to make it easier to program this thing. Yep. You know, I kind of laid out the fact that uh, that half the cost of of running this thing was programming it. Mm. I mean, you know, counting the machine cost right. and everything. And uh, in, in fact, that, you used a phrase in one of your interviews that said, "The assumptions under which we created Fortran." really, you know, aren't valid anymore. What, what were the assumptions that, that Fortran was created with? And I think you just said it to some degree. It was just cost reduce of, the cost of programming. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, because, I mean, it was just so slow. And, uh -huh. uh, the process of producing I mean, programs. You know, machines were very expensive, too. I mean, you know, like the rental for a, a 704 was, uh, you know, in the millions. You had Irv Ziller, as I remember, was one of the first ones yeah. that joined. Yeah. When I pitched this to her, you know, it was easy to persuade him to let me get Irv sure. to work with me, and uh, and it just sort of went like that. And that would have been one in by one. Fifty-four-ish, fifty-five. Uh, yeah. 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 And then, so you two toiled for a while, and then slowly the team grew. Yeah, over time. we were allowed to hire people. Yeah, yeah. And, and as I recall, the, the management touch around you was pretty light. That perhaps very, I'll put it this way: very, very you, light. You probably succeeded because you were left alone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we we were off in a building on Fifty Sixth Street. Yep. On the fifth floor of, of a little small building. Yep. And, uh, so tell me about some of those years because. Uh, I guess it's sort of like a temporary software that you kind of set a date saying, we'll finish by then, but it <laughs> kind of stretched out, didn't it? It kind of, it, <laughs> yeah, it kept being extended by six months every, every time somebody asked. Uh, but we had, we had a great deal of fun. You know, it was a very nice group of people. Yeah. Uh, you know, my main job was to break up chess games at lunchtime. I mean, the problem <clears throat> kept sort of subdividing like an amoeba. Ah. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, we first, the whole thing just got divided up into these phases. Sure. And, and, uh, the, th the phases of compilation, in effect? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so each phase was worked on by one or two or three people. Sure. And they kind of conversed with each other to get the interfaces right. And, and your um, role was sort of overall architecture yeah, for it, it sounds like. Yeah, my role is just sit around. <laughs> <laughs> but, so what were those major phases? The, uh, how did it well, break itself out? The first one was, you know, doing the uh, arithmetic stuff. Sure. Uh, and and so it that took in the whole all the data from the code yep. that was written and it produced the arithmetic code and stored a whole lot of data for the next phase right and uh the next phase was uh dealing with indexing mm -hmm. and uh and that they really couldn't deal with because of the only having three index registers. Oh my. So we decided that, or I decided that they should do it for a machine with an unlimited number of index registers. Right. And they did that. And then the third phase was to sort of uh, just put together all the stuff that had <laughs> accumulated. And the fourth phase, uh, then did this uh, sort of, oh, what's the name of it? Monte Carlo uh, calculation to, to right. 
to determine how to assign index registers. So when this first got unleashed to the world, because IBM mm -hmm. basically shipped this with every 704 then, didn't they? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And, and it was, of course, it was you know, bug-free in the first release. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, there was, we shipped it to, uh, apparently, we shipped one box of binary cards which is the only one we were able to produce because it, you know, it just ruined the, the punch, the card punch to produce these right. things. So we produced one box of binary cards and shipped it off to Westinghouse somehow or another. Yeah. And it arrived just this box of binary cards. Oh my gosh. And they, but they figured that this must be the deck for Fortran. Yeah. And so they, they actually ran it you know, loaded it, and uh, and then uh, executed this program. Wow! And and finally came, you know, had a compiler, and that which they then had a little test Fortran program, which they compiled, mm -hmm. and it ran. 